Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 18 of We the Revolution. Strange things are happening if you have seen the last episode. Uh, our brother is back from the dead and he's evil and he cut off our son's hand because we lost a game of dice and I, I don't really know. I don't know what to say anymore. Today we only have several minor cases. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Edgar Blanchet and his wife Sylvie were found to have been robbing inns and cellars on a regular basis. They also assaulted several people in the street. They were caught laden with stolen wine when they jumped out of a winery right into the arms of a guard patrol. Okay, well, I wouldn't have so much problems with stealing, but they assaulted people. Noël Boutet and Marius Abadie were playing war with other children in the yard and were pretending to be, we quote, the king's musketeers. One of the neighbors informed the guard. When the soldiers arrived at the scene, the children were building the Bastille out of old chests. Boutet and Abadie were going to defend it. <laughs> Seriously, they're just killed. <laughs> they're just children. Gilbert Leroux, a breeder of animals raised and killed for their fur, paid a significant amount of money to deputy Gaetan Pasquier, who in exchange was supposed to convince his colleagues to vote for a rise in the duty for furs imported from Eastern Europe. So he was bribing someone. Nah, no one's going to die for this. Marquise Bach deliberately misled Jean Poulain, who bought a country mansion from him, Buck made him believe that for his money he would get the palace, the garden, and part of the surrounding forest. In fact, the forest belongs to his neighbor. The truth came out when Poulain moved into his new house. Is he going to die for this? No. Seriously, everyone's digging up all the things we did bad, so maybe we should, I don't know, not kill too many people in the next few days. Thanks to an anonymous informant, we discovered that Carla Vernignac, Cécile Chiron, and Martin Trumeau had been trying to persuade evil spirits to overthrow the new authorities. Among the suspicious objects found in their apartments were books written in unknown languages and a variety of strange substances in flasks and jars. <laughs> Come on. During a domestic dispute, a 40-year-old Auguste Raoult went berserk. He attacked his elder sister. When their mother tried to intervene, he took a pan and hit the old woman in the head. She lost consciousness and died a few hours later. Uh, nope. I can't let that slip. Hate me, revolutionaries, all you want. You're going to hate me anyway soon. Everyone is going to hate me really soon because our crazy brother. Yeah, thank you too. Citizen Fidel, they have found another body. Who is it this time? Stop pretending. You know who. I don't know who! Do not play games with me. I thought that... Oh, never mind. Citizen Marat was found dead. Oh, of course. How fitting. Thanks, bro. Well, I know how this must look for me. Marat had it coming. A crazy Girondin got to him. I'm not sure if he paid for his sins. Or my own. Get him out. Oh, yay. There's a poster of me. Even from beyond the grave, Marat can deal substantial damage. The night before his death, he was able to typeset the last issue of his paper, focusing on your most recent misdeeds. He claimed that you were the one behind Gobel's death. You, the true mastermind, not Gobel's son. That's wrong, though. That wasn't us. We never said to Gobel's son that he should kill his father. We said that we can't help him, and I don't know. The paper also described how you overthrew Robespierre, only to gain absolute power in France. Didn't do it with that intention, I guess. There is no need to tell you what else was written. You know the truth. You know that his words contain more truth than lies. Everyone feels the same, even if they are not sure. And your family knows what you are capable of. In the eyes of Paris, you are a monster who was exposed by Marat. A monster who killed and buried the revolution. My family knows what I'm capable of? Seriously, my family is as messed up as I am. I'm still blaming my wife for getting me into, this, into all of this Henriot stuff. Oh, go ahead and hate me more, huh? Won't you?
Although I gotta say, I knew that my family wouldn't be on my side, except for maybe my father. Although I don't really understand why... I don't know. Huh. Yes, my construction is finished. That's nice. Yeah, my brother's army will arrive soon. I don't know what that means. So we have gained some influence over everywhere. Controlled by the enemy, huh. Well then, let's go somewhere. Um, what is he going to do? Yeah, let's do that. Can he do that too? I'm gonna take everything. I guess I'll need it. Visit the main section. Oh, okay. Oh, how pretty. How pretty. How pretty. Oh, great. Oh. Bad relationship with wife. Huh. What was already bad is getting even worse. Yeah, thanks. I know that. Oh, wait. What's about my son? Oh, good relationship. Thanks. Adolescent rebellion is starting to grow into quite adult hatred. You know, at one point, I can't even blame him. Because... Although, on the other hand, no. Why is it my fault that our crazy brother chopped off his hand? I suppose... He can't be mad at us for not playing dice well enough, right? Um, so let's see. Because I think... Yeah, I think I need to rule with the revolutionaries this time. Against my family, although they hate me anyway. Oh no, I get... Oh no. What did you do or what did you not do that I have to... No. Ah, oh, great. What? Whoa, 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 wait. Murder and counter-revolution. Ooh. Juicy. Huh. The defendant is Charlotte Corday, residing in Caen. She openly declares her sympathy for the Girondins. The woman murdered Jean Paul Marat. She was detained at the scene of the crime and confessed immediately. Hmm. Guilty then. According to our information, the woman displays an intense dislike of the Jacobins and anyone who contributed to the fall of the Girondins. She arranged a meeting with Marat under the pretext of turning in a group of her comrades who had supposedly planned an uprising in Caen. Marat's servants remained vigilant and initially did not let the woman near Jean-Paul, but allegedly the host reprimanded them and told them to let the supposed informer in. The man was sitting in his bath as rumor had it he suffered from a skin disease that was eased by long baths that is a strange um way to talk to other people it seems he suspects us nothing as we found none of the deceased weapons near the bathtub would be strange if he had his weapons near the bathtub after a short conversation corday thrust a knife between his ribs marat cried for help but had little chance of surviving after being so badly wounded when the servants ran in corday was standing at the window looking out as though she were examining the landscape she offered no resistance during her arrest but tightly gripped a copy of plutarch's parallel lives i do not know if it is any good i have not read it <laughs> nice on the way to her cell, she repeated many times that she had been acting on her own and was particularly keen on emphasizing that there was no man behind her act. The guards probably did not fully believe her as she began to shout in a corridor that she was a virgin, yet who would want to copulate with a lunatic like her? Marat is dead. Pierre Dacquin, I like your style of writing. <laughs> what? Jean-Paul Marat, he was our brother, one of the informal leaders of the revolution. Everyone loved him for his apt articles in which he highlighted the faults of the enemies to revival. Perhaps he was too sharp with his own conclusions, but could he have been otherwise? Evidence, a knife with dread blood in the blade and a copy of Parallel Lives by Plutarch. Oh, well then, let's make our questions here. Evidence was... The book. Okay, there's one trap. The offender's personality was... She's a supporter of the Girondins. Acting alone was... Maybe it was her personality? Maybe it was the method? Maybe it was both? Let's go with the method first. Yes. Oh, okay, that was the only one. Stabbed with a knife was probably also the method, right? 
and maybe her personality? So what was the alleged denunciation? That was probably a method too, right? I'm good. I'm doing good tonight. Uh, stabbed with a knife is probably a motive? I don't know how the bath could be a motive. We have enough to spend, so... Ooh. No mistakes were made. Okay. Oh. Wrong. Traitor! There aren't even a lot of people watching here. You will rot, bitch. Please introduce yourself. My name is Charlotte Corday. You have been accused of murdering citizen Mara. Yes, I did it. We rarely see people here confess so willingly. True. Why are you so hateful towards Mara? He was a symbol of the evil that is smothering my country. Is that why you stayed there after committing the crime? I'm not ashamed. I do not have to run. I have killed one man to save 100,000 and I will receive death as my reward. The fall of the Girondins was justified. That's a lie. The fall of the Girondins was planned. You issued your verdict and probably had a hand in the whole thing. What do you mean? The judge here was involved in a dispute with Minister Roland. All of a sudden, the Girondins were accused of treason. It's not hard to figure out. The judge Fidel must have had something to do with it. Enough of these aspersions. So this whole Girondin, Jacobin uh, thing, I, I don't really get it. I don't really get what our hand in this was. Are we supposed to believe that you acted on your own? It doesn't take a regiment of soldiers to stab someone with a knife. And nobody helped you to plan it. You made it particularly clear. I will say this loud and clear. I am aware that Monsieur Le Josh had a dispute with Marat, but let everyone here know that I was not instructed to do this by Judge Fidel. Thanks. All those coincidences. I don't need a man to administer justice. I don't need a man to do anything. My own strong will is sufficient. Ooh, a feminist. Why did you underline... Because your minds are unable to accept the idea that a delicate woman could kill. Mara was the same. Maybe that's why he let her in while having a bath. What you have done is a blow to all of France. Mara was an outstanding citizen of Paris, devoted to the revolution. He was scum. A monster. Only in Paris could someone like him be respected as the savior of the nation. To us in Caen, and for many people across France, he was and will always be an ordinary criminal. And also for those companions whom you intended to turn in? Do you think anyone will tell you the truth? You? The people who feed the guillotine with fresh blood? The transparent actions of the authorities were to be the foundation of the revolution. Perhaps in Paris, but in the countryside it is now worse than before. We used to blame the king for our hunger, and now we blame ourselves because it was us who put you in power. <laughs> Harsh. A bloodstained knife was found at the scene of the crime. Is it yours? Yes, I bought it not long before. Anyone who is secretly against another could administer such a blow. With an ordinary knife and no need for the performance you give every day on the guillotine. Hey, I don't give speeches every time. Just saying. Do you want to turn in your companions? There were no companions, as there was no uprising. I knew that the vision of a big conspiracy would convince Marat to meet with me. She's one shrewd bitch. You came from Caen. That's a long way from Paris. The journey passed quickly as I was focused on its purpose and the pleasure of imagining Marat as a pleading creature. You made sure to wear a beautiful outfit as well. A beautiful outfit for the guillotine, not for Marat. Well, she has a sad mind. You're acting as if you want to die. Such is the price of freedom and equality. I at least agree with Marat on one point. The change that is necessary for France must be introduced by force. I added my, unswer my unswerving strength of will to that end. Killing a statesman in a bath is an insult to the country. Was I supposed to wait for him to put his breeches on? You're talking about a great man here. To me, he was merely a small man pumped up with arrogance. I actually find this whole situation quite symbolic. Why? He was so defenseless. He suspected nothing. He had no weapons, just like the victims of his defamatory articles. Morat only told the truth. I've heard rumors that he got a skin disease from hiding in the sewers of Paris. He came out like a rat to die in his own shit. That is quite enough. The guillotine will embrace you. Just wait and see. Well, it doesn't matter anymore, so I'm just gonna ask her the last question too. 
When you were arrested, you were holding a book by Plutarch. Can you explain this choice to us? We know brilliant minds that grew up reading this book. Getting to know the ideals described within, it is a beacon to those who have their doubts. What manner of noble idea justifies the killing of innocent people? Hmm. Answer the question! The streets are red with the blood of hundreds of innocent victims, and you are asking me this question because of Marat alone? Ask the other heroes of the revolution. Oh, that's right, they're dead too. They've already been killed by the ideal they helped to create. So this man's death was justified? No less than the deaths of those Girgirondons who had the courage to disagree with you. Marat died, so many others could have the chance to live a little longer. What? You surely didn't think you had a monopoly on brutality? Well... Uh, I think it's pretty clear she murdered someone, she's going to die. I wonder if anything would have been different if I just... I don't know, if I just let everyone that I sh was supposed to kill go, but I guess we didn't have a choice. I guess we did have a choice, but, uh, well... It would be interesting to see what would have happened in this whole um, talk with our brother if we hadn't killed, like, Pasha's daughter, for example. Because it was hard. It was hard sentencing her to death because... Like I said before, we made her. Did the defendant... Yeah, she did. What was the murder weapon? A knife. Did the defendant turn in her accomplices? And no, she was working alone. Why did the defendant choose Mara? In her opinion, he was a symbol of the evil that smothered France. I guess that was it, right? I sentenced citizen Charlotte Cordier to be guillotined, lead the condemned out. That's right. Yes, dragged a pig out for slaughter. Yeah. I know. Well, I mean, you kind of came here dressed for it, right? I think I'm not gonna give a speech today because no one really likes me. Although, I'm not that unpopular among the people. Although everyone is talking shit about me well basically not shit but everyone's talking the truth about me oh well let's just be at her just make it quick okay You find a large-sized uniform on a hook. Only one employee is big enough to fit it. Your favorite gar court guard, Raphael Clovy. You find a short letter in one of the pockets and some parts of it stand out in particular. I am leaving the service. I can't do this any longer and too much blood on my hands. The rats are fleeing the sinking ship. No! No, you were supposed to take another district for me. Clovy, don't do this. I don't know. Terror is nothing but swift justice. Robespierre used to say that. And now an army of outcasts marches towards us to present their interpretation of those words. Do you come to arrest me? I came to tell you that certain people believe everything you did, you did for the benefit of France. Who are you? Officer Thomas Alexandre Dumas from the French army at your service. Do you believe in what those few say about me? Most deputies of the convention fled once they learned of the approaching army. The reinforcements that will be able to save us will take a dozen or so days to reach Paris. Do you believe I did everything because of France? No. But as far as I heard, you know the enemy better than any one of us. As a commander, I certainly appreciate that asset. And as a human being, I know that brotherhood is especially important when someone is fallen. You reach the bottom, but there are people willing to give you a chance to redeem yourself. I think you're talking to the wrong person. I am talking to a predator. I am talking to a person who is not averse to killing other citizens. And that is what awaits us. We will have to ruthlessly murder Frenchmen who stand on the other side of the barricades. I am talking to a murderer, because that is how you are known to those who are afraid of you. As ghastly as it sounds, you are exactly who we need. You said yourself that reinforcements are a dozen or more days away. 
That is why I gathered an army of loyal people. I will entrust them to you under one condition. Did you say an army? Look for yourself. A truly revolutionary army. The poor and the wealthy, white and black people, all marching side by side. They came here to protect Paris. You mentioned one condition. Make me a general. The first black commander of that higher rank in the whole of France. I do not have such power. But you do. You still hold the power of the guillotine, remember? Support me, and the army will be yours. Regardless of their origin or race, those people believe that if they are scared of you, our enemy should be even more terrified. Hand me a piece of paper and a pen, General. Well, I hope this doesn't bite us in the butt either, but hey, I'll take it. Ooh, what's happening here? What? The number of units given to you depends on your reputation. Okay, so what exactly does that mean? The whole of Paris is fighting. The political salon will be transformed into headquarters and the hideout will be transformed into a help center. The printing house will stop operating. Your brother's army will arrive tomorrow. The garrison generates reinforcements every turn. The higher your reputation, the more troops will join you. People are trying to avoid the enemy's cruelty in every section of Paris. Protect them for as long as possible. Your reputation depends on it. Toggle the view of refugees remaining in the district on and off. The physician treats your injured troops and provides a bonus to health points. Remember, if the troops die, the physician dies with them. Okay. Your brother's army will arrive tomorrow. Okay, I get it. Okay, let's put the weakest to the lowest amount of people. Let's see. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I am not sure what they will do. Garrison full? Oh, I'm supposed to set them up now. Hmm. Let's put you here. I can't. I put you here? Okay. Okay, I, I have to say I have no idea what I'm doing right now. But... Let's just set something up here. Let's just put someone in every district. Let's see. Oh, in the threatened section. Oh, okay, I see now. Okay, so there's the garrison, that's cool. Okay. So will this be our setup for fighting now, or... Will it just do it on its own? Ooh, we're in Act 3. Well, I guess it really is a new chapter. Okay, today we only have several minor. It's funny how you hear fighting outside. Well, it's not funny, it's sad. Colonel Gaspar Picard, who is in charge of the artillery of the internal army, was caught stealing building materials that were supposed to be used to build new barracks for the brigade, or at least that is what his subordinates are claiming. According to the report, he commissioned the transportation of several carts of bricks to his own mansion. Um, no. Jean-Carl Roussel, the owner of a bakery, refused to hire Deslisa, the son of an officer of the guard. We have grounds to suspect that he was discriminating against due to Roussel's royalist views. They have grounds to suspect. That's not an evidence. Officer of the guard Mich Michael Lagarde was murdered on his way home after a night shift. The hammer that probably served as the murder weapon was lying next to Raphael Mallet, who was found sleeping in a dark alley, blind and drunk. 
The hammer that probably served. That's still not evidence. Two officials, Alfred Bonnel and Yves Lahaye, bet up a messenger who spilled ink on some important papers. We found minor bruises and a small bump on the victim's head. The accused claimed that they yelled at the victim but did not hit him. I don't know, I wouldn't hang them for that. Noel Mortesier, an experienced stalker, gouged Marius Corbet's eyes out during a fight. According to witnesses, he grabbed the victim's head and smashed it into a wall. Unfortunately, there was a nail sticking out. Ah, uh, death. Marcel Manouri, a printer, published a treatise without the author's permission. The text was highly popular in Parisian bookshops. It was impossible to retrieve the, pr the illegally printed books. Nearly all of them had been sold. Ah, no, I wouldn't hang him for that. Huh, it looks bad for the revolutionaries with us. Let's go. Ugh, my only friend it seems. I hope. Don't betray me too, David. Thank you for coming. How is he feeling? Like a young man who hasn't who wasn't ready for what happened to him. Alexei, your brother paid me a visit, the one who is supposed to be dead. Shock. Let me finish. I respect the memory of our friendship. We have both helped each other in many ways, but I now know that because of my loyalty to you, I participate in something very wrong. No! Don't do this. My brother is a monster. The amount of blood shed by the revolution has changed us all into monsters. We can only hope that after we die, people will forget about us and all of our wrongdoings will be blown away. You prefer to side with my child's murderer over me? Thanks to him, I finally understood what we did to our country by giving the power to uneducated people armed with axes and torches. We need to restore the balance. And your brother is going to do that. He's a murderer. No, really, you can't do this to me. As are you and I. The only difference between him and us is that we will be honored with medals and statues. I do not want that kind of praise tainted by crime and deceit. Now is my last chance to change my fate. What are you going to do? I do not know. I will probably leave Paris while it's still possible, then wait and adapt to the new situation. Your court guard ran away this morning and Dramel. Turns out that he was always with your brother and did what was necessary to lead you to this moment. Screw you, Ramel! I knew it. I should have talked to those English spies. Ah! So you are all traitors. If that is how you see things, you have already failed. Goodbye, my friend. Uh, this is looking rather grim. Okay, what's happening here? Dinner with the officers? A warm home-cooked meal under a real roof would do your most dependable officers a lot of good. Your wife has always been an excellent cook. Yeah, but she doesn't like that. When he was younger, Bernard would often sneak out and explore Paris streets. Perhaps now his knowledge could help in saving refugees' lives. Furniture, rubble, barrels, everything can be used to build barricades. Let us provide protection for our troops and block off the strategic points. Those who cho chose to stay cannot just idly watch the soldiers fight. They need to contribute with whatever they have left. Huh. I'm thinking about either safe path or barricades. Maybe barricades. They are already here. Oh, it's day zero. The outcasts, the cursed ones. That is how they call themselves. The families of the victims of the revolution. The sons of those who were forced to run to other countries. They have groped their way in the dark for years and there was no one who would console them. Now they want France for themselves. As we do. So I wonder if there will be only battles now or if we really have some more cases to solve. 
The number of units given to you depends on your reputation. Additional troops, one city guard. Thanks. The political salon has been transformed into shows of actions to facilitate your fight for Paris. Okay. You have been attacked. If you have no troops in a section, you will automatically lose. Okay. I have, though. Okay, so what is this about to do? Build barricades? Okay, so this is not done yet. Shall I build some more barricades? Maybe. Let's do that. Now let's intrigue. Let's see what happens now. Madame de Stael has used the city's moment of weakness to fight for women's rights. I am not one to judge the motivations of other people, but if we do not stop her today, we may not make up tomorrow. Oh, so now we're fighting against feminists too? <laughs> Great. <laughs> we're being so popular right now. Ah. Women took to the streets of Paris. They marched to the town hall chanting and occupied one of its halls to debate the rights of women in revolutionary France. They were led by Madame de Stael, the educated and ambitious founder of one of Paris's political salons. She convinced her supporters that the revolution has not given women freedom, equality and brotherhood and that they must fight for it themselves. The threats and intense announcements led to the spontaneous creation of the Declaration of Women's Rights, signed by every participant of the event. The timing was not accidental. Madame de Stael will surely use our current situation to her and other women's benefit await further information i don't know i think that we have worse problems right now than women's uprising well then let's fight all the battles i guess oh choose your general you can fight the battle on your own or accept general dumas's help the battle will be fought automatically each of the enemy generals have their favorite tactics and tricks Okay, so they have- they're more of a defense thing. Oh, it's only me or him and we have the same. Well, then you know. Let's just try and do it ourselves. Although, I mean, his size the same. Well, then, let's, let's let him fight. I don't want to do this right now. <laughs> oh, no. A lot of people died. Um, okay. So, can we help them now in any- No. Oh, okay. I don't really get it till now. <laughs> Until now. I still don't get it. Oh, it's a case! Citizen, I am sure that you have already received your copy of the Declaration of Women's Rights. Let us meet in the evening so that I can list our demands. Germaine de Stael. Oh, you again. Nice. Stuff is happening. We're gonna take a break now. I'm gonna continue Act 3, Day 2 in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.